Hello everyone, my name is Pepsilk and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Payday 3 technical beta that just finished up this past weekend. I had a blast playing it and while it's designed to be a server stress test, hence the open betaness of it and getting thousands of people to jump into it, I was able to experience the foundation of what is going to be the future of Payday going forward, while also getting an idea of how progression and combat goes down. For the sake of all the footage shown, I didn't bother to record any stealth gameplay as all of my footage shows combat despite some attempts to stealth. If you're a Payday player like myself, you'll know that public stealth lobbies are very likely to fail every time you try. Let's get into it, shall we? The core of Payday games has always been about the gameplay, and boy does the gameplay feel really freaking good here. At first I was thinking to myself that it'd be a more improved Payday 2 because of the gunplay and the dynamic AI, but after some careful thinking, I was wrong. Payday 3 feels more reminiscent of Payday the Heist and is more grounded in reality with fewer cops on the field and guns sounding as hard as Infinity Ward's sound department with the new Modern Warfare games. And that's a good thing. In one of their dev blogs, Starbreeze did mention that they wanted Payday 3 to feel like its own game, not try to take what Payday 2 did and improve upon it as Payday 2 should be known as the game it is right now, which is a horde shooter with dozens of cops to melt down. I remember during the OG Payday 2 days when the game used to be more methodical and tactical, having to utilize cover and your surroundings in order to gain one step ahead of the cops, or not pushing them as you'll go down quickly. That however changed with the introduction of the perk decks and new skill trees, but that's a whole other topic for another video. Payday 3 wants players to play smart and not brainless, completing objectives at a steady pace and working together to withstand the NYPD. What I love about Payday 3 as an OG player of the series are the new mechanics that Starbreeze have implemented, such as shooting the glass off shields, bulldozers rushing towards you, tasers actually having a taser and not an assault rifle with a taser on it, negotiating time by freeing hostages, being able to complete certain actions whilst in casing mode, and many more. It helps to keep the game feeling similar but fresh at the same time and I'll admit, it was a bit to take in at first given the arcade feel of Payday 2 where you just run around with a two-piece suit and shoot every cop that's in front of you. After a few heists, I started to get a feel for how the game works and it all just kicked in from experience with the other games. A nice subtle change that I love is being able to sprint with money now. This was never a thing in Payday 2 as it would register this as heavy, and I'm assuming there's going to be weight values for all the different items that we'll be picking up as well, alongside being able to sprint with them. I'm simply spitballing here, but it wouldn't surprise me if they decided to do so. The guns themselves felt great for the most part, with solid animations and sound effects. My go-to gun was the Rainfeld shotgun because after I realized how much of a pea shooter the car 4 was, I decided to switch off to the shotgun to see what that was like and it was awesome. Coupled that with the basic build that I had which I'll explain later. This also leads to the first issue I have and that's that guns can feel like absolute pea shooters at times. I did try the SMG and the pocket SMG that was available, and it felt like I was unloading bullets into the cost before I realized that I had no ammo and needed to find an ammo box stat. Now granted, this is a 5 month old build from April, so I can't really fault them here as I'm hoping this will be changed somehow in the future. My suggestion for this if it is not changed is to increase the ammo pickup from dead cops on the full auto guns, so that we don't have to always rely on running an ammo box in order to keep us restocked. I get that ammo boxes are meant to extend our longevity during assaults like they always do, but if I'm going to run a close up build where I'm in the enemy's face and I end up not having the ammo to do so due to the sponginess of enemies, why should I bother? The shotgun felt more ammo efficient than the full auto guns because of its 2 ammo pickup. Which is good because the common cops usually take around 1-2 to two shells to kill depending on where you're at during the assault, since the cops get stronger the longer you stay. And that leads me to my next point which is a dynamic AI system that's in place. Similar to Payday 2, the AI situationally places cops around the heist area, ranging from common cops to uncommon cops and specials like the shield and the new nader, which I really love. I also notice that the cops get harder the longer you stay in a heist. So to start off with, they usually send the typical SWAT alongside shields and tasers, followed by hostage rescue units either later down the first assault or the following one, then bringing out more of the uncommon enemies like the tasers, cloakers and shields, then bringing out the dozers on the third wave. I'm talking about it this way because it looks like they distribute cops in an order, and I'm not sure if this is going to change in the final build, as Payday 2 usually just spawns dozens of cops with different specials in between, so you never know what you're going to get. I was able to get an idea of what enemies were going to come in different assaults, which gave me time to anticipate and encourage myself alongside the team to get the money out as fast as possible. Efficiency is key to getting things done on loud. Another cool thing that I found interesting is that enemy HP is no longer scaled based on difficulty, 
as explained in the combat devlog for Payday 3, which provides weapon and build variety, as they want to open up as many options as they can for us. In Payday 2, most guns get outclassed by others, resulting in them in not being used on higher difficulties, so the only thing that will change are the special spawns, which will ramp up the higher you go. This is a great change and nice to have every gun be usable for once, as the game will continue to grow and add new weapons, giving us even more options. Another observation that I noticed while playing is the big emphasis on teamwork. This may be a bit of a hot take, but hear me out here. In Payday 2, a lot of the high-end builds that you see on the internet revolve around a toxic solo playstyle, where it's designed for you to fend for yourself. For example, the Anarchist Perk deck is a deck that converts 50% of your armor into health and dealing damage restores a percentage of that armor back to you, alongside armor regenerating in intervals based on what armor you're using. However, this perk deck doesn't offer any sense of teamwork at all, as this is more or less survivability to help with the higher difficulties, which you'll most certainly need because they hit like a truck. Now I know that if you take the skill trees into account, then you can definitely get support in that instance like running Inspire for quick revives and Doctor Bags to help reset your downpour, but other than that, a lot of builds tend to rely on Joker Cops and dishing out tons of damage instead of catering to a specific part of the team, like completing objectives or carrying bags as fast as possible. I just personally feel that Payday 2 feels like a solo game a lot of the time because on Deathwish or lower, although you can argue Mayhem or lower too, but their sentence is definitely hard without the proper setups. You could join anyone you like, play the game on normal, sorry, play the game as normal and not feel like you're working as a team, despite it being a co-op game which people don't often think about until it's put into their brain. In Payday 3, however, with the new skill lines and flow of the game, it definitely feels more team-based in that you need to work together to kill the cops and complete objectives as efficiently as possible. Another example, perhaps, if my point isn't getting across further, are the bulldozers. In Payday 2, bulldozers are pretty trivial in that you can kill them by yourself with relative ease, and Starbreeze realized that they felt underwhelming to fight towards the end of Payday 2's lifespan so they buffed them up to make them stronger and a lot harder to kill in Payday 3. It's not to say that they're not killable in Payday 3, but you definitely need another gunman with you to help take him out, and this is a good thing. Teamwork makes the dream work in these sorts of games, and seeing people working together and getting things done is nothing but satisfying. Payday 2 to me just feels like 4 mindless baboons shooting at cops left, right and center, and occasionally completing the objectives they need to do. Everything you do in Payday 3 has its purpose, and it's important to keep track of where everyone is and what everyone is doing, so you don't get carried away. Payday 3 has significantly changed the skill system, making use of skill lines similar to Payday 2's perk decks. Each tree has a basic skill, skills associated with that tree, and a mastery skill once you max out the line. The catch is that you can't use the skills within the skill line unless you have the basic skill equipped, so keep that in mind. However, once you master a skill line, the mastery skill can be picked up without needing to invest a point into the skill line, which is nice and saves skill points so you can spec into other lines and such. The skills have also been designed around three new passive traits slash bonuses, which are Edge, Grit, and Rush. Edge increases your damage by 10%, Grit reduces the damage you take by 10%, and Rush grants you increased movement speed, each for a period of time. Starbreeze explained in their skills dev blog that they want players to experiment and create builds around these three bonuses, which help give you an advantage. For my basic beta build, I opted for a close-up shotgun build, gaining both edge and grit so that I can have a damage and damage reduction boost while blasting enemies with my Rainfeld. There's plenty of skills to choose from, from ammo consumption to support, damage, tank, special counters, and more. I'm a bit skeptical about the current system because it didn't feel meaningful even with having 7 skills for the beta, something that will have to be tested when the full build comes out, as it felt like a side bonus. I'm curious as to why they didn't bother to go with a skill tree system like Payday 2. I guess they didn't want too much bloat for the game given that there were two different sets of skills and it could be a lot to take in when it comes to balance. More will be added over time as well, so it'll be curious to see how they decide to go with this. So far, so good I'd say. I've noticed that on both the subreddit and the Steam discussions for the beta that the game's performance is horrible, not being able to hit 60 FPS on an Nvidia 40 series card. For those that don't bother to read, this build is an early build of the game from about 5 months ago, dating back to April this year, hence why the performance is a bit iffy. Granted, I had the same issue as well but didn't see it as a problem since the build isn't properly optimized anyway. The game did run well for me though, so I can't complain. Graphical settings are standard, like most Unreal Engine games, and the game has had a major upgrade in the visual department, departing from the ancient diesel engine, and even though Payday isn't about the graphics, it looks great and I'm so happy that Starbreeze were able to come through 
with making the game look a bit more vibrant while also keeping that gritty sort of style that the other games had. There were some missing string entries in the keybinds, but I just thought of that as more of a meme than anything else. The new ping system is dope, taken from other modern games. The customization is solid with master buy, weapons to unlock, and skins to buy with your hard-earned cash. The new C-Stack system is cool, having a second currency that can only be earned with in-game money, debunking the theory of Payday 3 being a pay-to-win game. These C-Stacks are used to buy special pieces of gear and are reset every week, as you can only buy an X amount of them before they are all used up for good. There's three types of progression in the game, which are weapons, skill lines, and infamy. Weapons and skill lines earn XP after completing a heist, whereas infamy or player level is earned by completing challenges, ranging from getting kills with certain guns, completing heists under set conditions, racking up your kill count, and many more. These weren't shown in the game aside from the mission summary at the end, but will be shown to us at full release. I'm hoping that we can track challenges similar to Payday 2 as well. On a final note, I had a blast playing through the Payday 3 technical beta, despite the servers crashing a few times, which all me himself said it wouldn't. It's going in a new direction, and I can't wait to see what the future of Payday has to offer for us. We got a seasonal model of content, lots of free content coming alongside it, and plenty of goofballs to come around knowing Overkill slash Starbreeze. And I'm going to make a follow-up review video on Payday 3 once I've sunk enough time into it. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe with notifications turned on for more gaming content. If I missed anything, comment down below. I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.